Hi, my name is David Stein. I'm an attorney. And today's presentation is Top 10 Things to Know About the SBA PPP Loan Program. That's a Payment Protection Program Loan. Now, before we get into the presentation, I just wanted to bring to your attention an important update. As some of you may know, the funds for this program were initially issued in the beginning of April, and the funds very quickly ran out. So on April 21st, 2020, Congress agreed to provide an additional $310 billion for the PPP loan program. So this is now a second opportunity to apply for the PPP loan program for those that did not have the chance the first time. So it's important that you apply as soon as possible, as you may very well be aware that applicants are accepted on a first come first serve basis. Now the first part is what is the SBA PPP loan program? So in March 27, 2020, the president signed the CARES Act, that's the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act. Under the CARES Act, $350 billion was set aside to issue loans to small businesses to give them an incentive to retain their employees. Known as the SBA PPP program, it allows any business that has no more than 500 employees to apply for a loan as high as $10 million, and this loan is potentially fully forgivable. The next part is who is eligible to apply for the PPP loan? So it's any business that has 500 or fewer employees whose principal place of business is in the United States and they have to have been in operation prior to February 15, 2020. Business in this case is defined fairly broadly and has been held to include sole proprietorships as well as independent contractors. There are a number of things, however, that can disqualify the applicant, such as if they have engaged in illegal activity, or if the owner, someone that has 20% or more in the business, has had criminal charges brought against them, as well if, as if the applicant is delinquent on a SBA loan in the past. What are some perks of the SBA PPP loan? So this loan has some amazing perks and we're gonna go into it. One of them is the bank does not look to see if you have any assets or collateral to secure the loan. The loan does not require any personal guarantee. The loan does not require the applicant to show that they have the cash flow or means to pay back the loan. And of course, the loan is potentially fully forgivable. On that note, in addition to being fully forgivable, the funds that are forgiven will not be taxed, which in a way is better than receiving a gift because typically if you receive a gift, you are taxed on the forgiven amount. Furthermore, there's relatively little documentation needed to apply for the loan and you do not have to pay any extra fees to the broker or to the bank in applying for the loan. These fees are paid by the federal government. Finally, the funds are dispersed relatively quickly. The next part is how do I calculate how much funds I am el eligible for? So basically the loan is two and a half times the borrower's monthly payroll costs. So the way you calculate it is, you figure out the 12 months of payroll for the period prior to February 15, 2020. Then you take any employee that's included in the calculation in which their compensation is over $100,000 and you reduce that number to $100,000. Then you divide the total amount of the payroll by 12 to get the average monthly amount. Finally, you multiply that figure by 2.5 
And the final figure is the amount that you're eligible for. Now, what sums can be included in the payroll calculations? As you see from the slide, it is fairly broad. So you uh, can include salary, wages, commission, as well as vacation, family, medical, or sick leave. You can include healthcare benefits and retirement benefits, as well as state and local taxes that were assessed. It's also important to note that 1099 workers will not be included in the payroll calculations. 1099 workers, however, can apply on their own for this loan. Now, what are the terms of the loan? So the loan is a two-year loan. The interest rate is 1%. The interest could be deferred for up to six months. Not only that, the bank has the option of deferring it even up to 12 months. There is no prepayment penalty. And finally, you can apply for all or part of the loan to be forgiven. What documents do you need when you apply for the loan? Typically, you'll need your driver's license, the articles of incorporation, the operating agreement, any payroll records you have for the 12 month look back period, any tax records you have to substantiate the payroll for the 12 month look back period, and also the two page sign application form known as SBA form 2483. How much of the loan can be forgiven? So it's any amount of the loan that is used towards payroll during the eight weeks following receiving the loan is fully forgivable. Also, up to 25% of a loan, which is used for things such as mortgage, rent, utilities, um, and interest on loans during the eight weeks following receiving the loan can be forgiven. Note the interest on loans or the rent that you're paying has to have been for leases and loans that were in place prior to February 15, 2020. There can be a reduction in the amount of loan that is eligible for forgiveness. And that is if you reduce your headcount following receiving the loan, that is a basis to reducing the amount that is eligible for forgiveness. Furthermore, if you reduce any of your employees' compensation by more than 25%, that's also a basis for reducing the amount that you're eligible for forgiveness. However, it's important to note that you can eliminate that deduction if you restore the headcount for any deduction reductions in headcount made between February 15, 2020 and April 26, 2020, that you restore to the prior headcount level by June 30th, 2020, you eliminate that potential deduction. Finally, some helpful tips about applying for the loan. The amount set aside for this loan is capped and it's on a first come first serve basis. This is um, potentially the second time that people are having, are gonna have the opportunity to apply for this loan. So I urge anyone watching this presentation if they have not done so already to apply as soon as possible. Also, it's a good idea to set up a separate bank account to deposit the proceeds from the loan. So this way you could clearly document how and in what way you have used the proceeds of the loan. This way, when you're applying for forgiveness, it'll be easier for you to substantiate 
for what purposes you used the loan. I hope that this presentation was helpful. And of course, if for some reason you need assistance, feel free to reach out to me and uh, stay safe and have a good day.